Is it worth it to only upgrade your Mac one CPU generation, like from an M1 to an M2 MacBook? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So I get asked this question all the time. People always ask me, if I have like an M1 MacBook Air, should I upgrade to an M2 MacBook Air? Is the difference gonna be big enough to make a difference in the cost and all that stuff? And this can hold true with an M2 to an M3. It's just that one generation upgrade. Now, I have some experience with this because I did recently upgrade from an M1 MacBook Air to this M2 MacBook Air. Now granted, my M1 was a base model. This has got 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD over here. So it's a little bit of a difference. But overall, when I went from M1 to M2, now I just wanna kinda of set up that that's kind of where my experience is coming from. Now I want you to stay tuned for the whole video because what I'm gonna do is a couple things in this video. Number one, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a real world example of my workflow. I use CapCut for Mac and I'm gonna do a video uh, you know, video export uh, of, of, you know, I do 4K editing for my channel right here, and I'm gonna export that video out. And I'm gonna put the, the M2 up against the M1 and see exactly how long of a difference there is there. Now, keep in mind again, the M1 over here, since I don't actually have my MacBook, M1 MacBook Air, I'm gonna use an M1 Mac, um, <laughs> iMac over here. Now, it's about the same, so we're gonna have to use this with a grain of salt, but it's very similar, it's just the M1 chip. This is also the base model, eight gigs of RAM, uh, what is a 256 gigabyte SSD versus the 16 gigs over here in the M2 and the 512. The SSDs are ex almost exactly the same speed. This didn't have the slowdown like the M2s did. So this one actually is about 3000 megabytes per second and so is this. It's just the difference in RAM really and the difference in the CPU. Now, the cool thing with this is there's a reason why I have more RAM on here and it's gonna come back. I'm gonna talk about this later, why that's important. But overall, you know, just keep that in mind that this is gonna have some more RAM on it as well. All right, so to set up the test again, I'm gonna be using CapCut for Mac, and I'll get into the, I'll show you what I, the actual video I'm gonna be rendering, or not rendering, I'm gonna be exporting on both exact same systems. So I'm gonna have the exact same video on both of these, and then we're gonna compare the times and how long the export time is. So that's gonna be coming up. Now keep in mind that that's my workflow. I use CapCut for Mac, it's a free editor, it's great. But I mean, if you use something like Final Cut Pro, there could be some bigger differences and stuff like that because it's more optimized. Just keep that in the back of your head. I'm using CapCut, it's a very specific test, and, and it doesn't mean you know this test will hold true for everything, but I'm just showing you one world example that's gonna just be a piece of your data that you need on making this change. All right, so look over here. So here's the video I'm gonna be doing on both of these. I'm gonna be exporting this. You can see here, this is my normal workflow. I have one, two, three layers of 4K video. This is 4K video out of a Sony camera. I have a couple layers of text and fillers in here. I have a sound file, and then you know this is all 4K down here. So I have some transitions, some color edits, things like that built into here. But you can see this is my workflow. This would be a video that I would make Fairly simple, but still 4K. Now, if I export this later, let's get and kind of give you the settings here, just so you have them. It would be 4K, bitrate is about 2600 kilobytes per second, codec is H.264, and then I do MP4 files, and that's 24 frames per second on the export out. So, you know, just for your reference, that's basically what it is. Now, this video is also 15, basically 15 minutes exactly right there on the dot. So it's 15 minute video that I'm gonna be exporting. I'm gonna be doing it on the M1 and the M2, and then we're gonna get some render times, render times, export times, to see which one was faster. Now, when I come back with this information, don't leave right away, because there's a whole part of this at the end of it that makes a lot more sense once I kind of show you these numbers. All right, so we got done with this first test over here on the M1 base model. This is basically the iMac, and it took for the 15 minute video, you know, that rendering or the exporting, I keep saying rendering, and you know, it was a 15 minute video. It was seven minutes and 57 seconds to render that, export that 15 minute video. Now that's not too bad. So it's almost like, what is it, roughly half or whatever, so seven, 57 is the number. Now, if I look at the other one, so we went ahead and we ran this one right after that. And again, nothing was open on either of these. I left no other applications open, so they had the full resources, but this has got more RAM, 16. This only came back at six minutes and 59 seconds. So 659 versus 757. I mean, it's a difference of exactly almost what that CPU means, like 15 or 17% or somewhere in that range. Now, that's not a lot of time, obviously. So if you're thinking about this, you know, I do maybe three at most four videos per week. That's only like a minute difference on a 15 minute video. Most of my videos don't even take 15 minutes. So I'm saving four or five minutes a week, you know, when I'm in this type of export setup. So when you look at this from the standpoint of, is it worth the upgrade solely on the CPU? Solely on the CPU, I tell a lot of people, no. 
um, you know, because of the fact that just based on CPU, you can see that there's not a huge difference for my workload. Now, I'm not a huge corporation. I do YouTube videos, but I mean, four or five minutes is like me going, you know, I got a cup of coffee or something. I'll, it may even take longer than that. So it's not going to change my workflow, my monetary stuff coming in. It's really not going to do much for me, but that's not what I'm going to say here. So why did I do it then? I mean, why would I still actually recommend it? That's the key. I actually still recommend buying this single generation upgrade under a certain circumstance, which is exactly what I did, and I'm going to get into that. So think about it for a second, but why would you actually still do this when you see the small difference? Oh yeah, just full disclosure as well. I did it, but I also got, let me think, I got 550 bucks from Best Buy in a trade-in for my M1 MacBook Air base model, which cost me 850. So over two and a half, three years, I spent 300 bucks on that. Pretty incredible deal. Then I picked up this one over here, which I put this nice skin on, link in the description if you want to pick one up. I like it. I don't know if everyone will. But anyways, this is cool. So I got this midnight color, too many fingerprints, so I put the skin on. But that's why I got this. But there's this other reason I want to talk about. If you haven't guessed it, all right, so this is what I say. If you're going to make an upgrade of a single generation chip from M1 to M2, M2 to M3, M3 to the future M4, stuff like that, only do it if you're going to upgrade the RAM at the same time. And let me explain. So obviously, if I was just to go from a base model M1 to a base model M2, it would not have been worth it. For me, a couple minutes a week is not going to make a huge difference. But I upgraded the RAM to 16 gigs over here. Number one, it obviously helps with swap considerably. So it's going to probably save your hard drive a long time because really your hard drive is using a ton of swap on the M1. And we don't know how long that's going to last. Over here, it doesn't have to use almost any swap with the same kind of configuration. That's number one. So you have to take that into fact, you know, consideration as well. But that's not the main reason. It's just your experience using the computers, right? So when I did this, I actually noticed right away that I could have two to three times the amount of apps open over here using no swap versus you know less, lot less stuff open over here using more swap. So when I open up 20 tabs like my normal workflow, I have Keynote, Keynote, Keynote open, Photoshop open, Pages open. Sometimes I have um, you know I'm recording something. I have all this stuff going, and on the M1 system, you know you, you just have a, a worse experience. So when you start opening all that up, and then you try to do video editing you start getting a little bit more choppy in there on the timeline. When you have everything, not, nothing open, it's fine for the most part, but you really want to get other stuff done while you're working, right? You have other things going on on your computer. Over here, it's so much smoother because you do have the extra RAM, no swaps being used, and it's a world of difference. Now, the CPU is faster, but like 15, 17% at most, and I don't really notice that that much, but the RAM is what I notice. So, when I, you know, the moral of this whole story at the end of the day is going to be a simple thing. I showed you the test. It's not that big of a deal, right? I mean, it's going to be a minute or two, and it's going to be similar like that. If you do Final Cut Pro, it might be a little bit longer, but still, I mean, it, what is it, six, seven, eight minutes a week? It's not going to make or break you on an export. Um, but it's the timeline and it's the, the, you know, how you're doing things and the experience of things maybe taking two seconds to come up when they shouldn't or, you know, the experience of being, you know, apps kind of, you know, flaking out on you and stuff like that. The total experience is so smooth when you have the extra RAM versus when you don't. And that's the reason you want to do this. So if you're thinking about this upgrade, you want the cost to be right because usually you'll upgrade at the end of the cycle when the new chip's about to come out. And then you can actually get really good deals like I did on this one for $13.99 with 16 gigs and also the 512 gigabyte SSD. That's number one. But number two, you always upgrade that RAM because it doesn't matter if you're going from 16 on an M2. Let's say you had this 16 gigabyte on an M2 and then the air comes out. Uh, the M3 Air, I would go up to 32 gigs if it's even available there, or at least 24. You always want to upgrade that RAM because it just makes it so much faster. The CPU won't make as big a difference as the RAM. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up, but I just wanted to give people confidence that if you're making a change like this, it is worth it under that circumstance. Um, but if you're not going to make, you know, the, the expend the extra 200 bucks or how, whatever you have to do, maybe you get a sale like I did and I didn't have to pay for it. But if you do you have to spend that extra money and you do the upgrade in RAM, then it is worth it because then you're going to a little bit faster CPU, more RAM, and it's going to be a lot better experience for you where it does justify. Now, you know, with all this said, though, if the old system like this one over here with eight gigs was working fine for you because of your workload, you never saw any slowdowns, then you shouldn't upgrade either. That's pretty obvious, but I just wanted to state that the facts are when you actually do upgrade like this, there's a reason to do it. And for me, it was RAM for my workflow, just for the smoothness of all the stuff that I'm working with, having multiple apps open, tabs open, not worrying about stuff, not worrying about the hard drive getting, you know, old because it's using swap too much. That was what was on my mind. So I just wanted to share that with people. I hope this helps people making the decision. And uh, we'll talk soon. I make a couple of videos per week. I mean, I make maybe three to four. And I, you know, if you can subscribe to help me out, that would totally help me. Um, I'm up to like 23,000 now. Can't believe it. So we'll talk to everybody soon. Peace.